The day has come. The Last of Us Part Two Remastered is actually available right now, whether you buy it at full price or if you want to get it through the $10 upgrade fee if you already owned it on PS4, which is what I did. Once you pay for the $10 upgrade, you load into the game, you'll select story, and then you can import a game save from your version of The Last of Us Part Two that you owned previously, assuming that's what you did. And then it'll load in, it'll redeem like a thousand achievements if you finish the game. So just be ready for that. But then you're in the game and ready to go. And there's a lot that's been added here. Allow me to show you. For one, the visuals have received an upgrade and it's rendering at a higher resolution than it was before. If you played this on PlayStation 5 previously, you already got to experience it at 60 FPS because they did a free update to enable that. However, now you're able to play it at a higher resolution so it looks far better and there's been improvements to things like texture quality, to things like water simulation, and other things such as some models and different stuff have seen upgrades as well. But to be completely clear, this is an update that is primarily about the content, not really the visual upgrade because the game already looked fantastic and it didn't need this remaster to improve it. So just to be very clear, that's what's going on here is there is a visual update technically, but in terms of what you'll actually be able to see and appreciate, there's not much going on. Oh, did you see that? Man, I'm good. Oh, can I get her too? I think I can. Oh yeah, I did it. Man, I... Still got it, fam. Right after I finished playing The Last of Us Part Two last time, I decided to go back through and play it on their like grounded difficulty, which is basically if you die, you lose. There's no save states. It's one run and that's it. You don't really have the chance to screw up. And that is paying off in droves right now. I'll tell you what. Here we are one more over here. Okay, all right. Come along, Lenny. Come around the truck, Lanny. Or Lisa, maybe. Oh my God, reload. Oh my God. Oh, okay. That was close. Okay. Maybe I'm not as good as I remember I was. <laughs> okay. We're good now. Now we can go through here and, and uh, continue the video. Sorry, I got distracted. Sorry, I got distracted. I remember when I did this in like the hardcore mode. I didn't kill like anybody. I just stealthed my way around it. And it's because like, it's extremely difficult on that higher difficulty. And they built most of these encounters such that you can do just that. If it's just too difficult to take them on or you don't have enough ammo, you can just bypass it by stealthing and you don't have to worry about it. It's awesome. Also real quick, before I forget, I'm gonna be giving away a copy of The Last of Us Part Two Remastered, whether it's a $10 upgrade for you or a full price version of the game. I don't care. I just want to say thank you for being a subscriber. So subscribe here and follow me on TikTok, which I'll have linked below and I'll have the official rules for the giveaway down below as well. If you do that, you're entered, don't need to do anything else. And I will announce the winner live on stream, I guess Monday because you're seeing this on set. Yeah, Monday, okay. <laughs> Again, full rules and everything in the description box below, but I'm gonna give away a copy of this to somebody just because I love you guys for making my dreams a reality, right? That's fair. You make my dreams a reality, I give you a $50, $60 video game. Call it even. <laughs> but okay, enough of that. Okay, uh, back to it. So there's been some visual improvements and stuff like that, which honestly are so minimal, it's really hard to gauge. I mean, I'll have Jacob put on screen right now, the little side-by-side -side that they've been posting. I can't tell the difference between these two. I don't know what is improved here. Like, I think the resolution is technically better, but in terms of core graphical capability and fidelity levels, it all looks about the same. I, I'm gonna be honest, it still looks fantastic. So why do you pay the $10 to upgrade this? Well, not only do you get the slight improvements that you may or may not notice, but you also get some other stuff, such as this new option, for no return. You'll also see extras. There's all sorts of stuff in here that was not in here before, such as speedrun recap. I don't recall that. And then also guitar free play. If you just want to play the guitar with no goal or time limit, you just alternate characters, instruments, guitar effects, and you just play with the little mini game they built for it. So that's cool. And the reason they have a speedrun recap is because they now have it. So when you pass the main story, you can unlock basically a speedrun mode, which is cool. If you go here uh, under new game, you can create a custom game and you can like fine tune stuff. There's all sorts of cool little details that they've put in here kind of as a, a labor of love, which I think is 
just awesome. If we go to the no return mode though, we click on this and then you see uh, a pretty simple starting screen. And how this works is basically that you start a run and just like any other roguelike mode in any of these games, you're going to run a semi-randomized uh, set of combat encounters. As you can see here, you will fight through a series of randomized combat encounters culminating in a boss fight. Death is permanent. Acquired weapons, items, and upgrades are reset, and a new randomized map is generated for each new run. So if we select this, in terms of difficulty, we'll just start with moderate, whatever the default is, and then select our characters. From here, we can select Ellie, Dina, Jesse, Tommy, Joel, Abby, Lev, Yara, Mel, or Manny. Each of these are locked behind different things, as you can see here. If we select, say, Joel, what do we need to play Joel? We select this, and then it says, for Joel, progress Tommy's challenges to unlock him. To unlock Tommy, you have to progress Jesse's challenges, and in order to unlock Jesse, you have to unlock Dina, and then you progress through Ellie's challenges to unlock Dina. So there's just a series of, of levels to this, but basically the more you play it, the more characters that you'll unlock, if that makes sense. <laughs> I know it sounds more complicated than it is. Basically, you play more with each character you unlock, and you'll eventually be able to play different characters. As you can see here, the challenges in the bottom left, uh, complete two encounters with Ellie. Do two encounters, you get Dina. Pretty simple. You can see that Ellie starts with a Molotov cocktail and a basic pistol. Her play style is balanced. 50% more supplements, Molotov recipe, and two upgrade branches. Dina has a different play style than all those. Abby is shocker. She runs with a hammer. <laughs> I'm surprised it's not a golf club. She specializes in close range combat and she heals on melee kills and stuff like that. So it's super cool how varied they are. Because we're playing The Last of Us, I have to select Ellie to begin with. So that's what we're going to do. You can see I can also select different skins, which you can purchase using different points. If we go back here to extras from Ellie, you can select these for the little P points. 10P, 10 pence, a post tense. We can unlock some of these for... Uh, a very low currency amount, which I already have since I've completed the game. But if you have not played the game before, then you'd have to pay for that. I'm going to play as an astronaut with a helmet. That just seems like a layup. So I'm going to unlock that. And we're going to go through this with an astronaut version of Ellie and try this no return mode. Warning, challenge level and character cannot be changed after starting. That's okay. Let's do the thing. And then we load in. That's the other thing that's also seen improvements are uh, load times. Last of Us has notoriously had very long load times, but now it's all mo beta. So here we go. You will return to this hideout between each combat encounter. Okay. Using the planning board, select your next encounter, making a path towards the final boss. Encounters vary based on location, enemy factions, mods, and victory conditions. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, her voice even has an effect on it because she's wearing the helmet. Oh, I love it. That's awesome. Okay, so we select this. Our first encounter is in Jackson, and it is an assault type encounter against the Seraphites. Enemies start in search, and score multiplier is 1.5x, and we get those rewards once we achieve that. And we're trying to get through all of these so that we can reach the final boss which is a bloater in this case inside of the arcade okay so let's start let's go for it and hopefully i don't get my ass kicked too hard assault clear each wave okay so with this this is trippy because <laughs> you don't normally have combat in jackson so to see combat take place in jackson is is a little trippy but okay so it's a pretty small area there's a health pack where are they going to come from? Let's see. Hello? Seraphites? Nothing. Damn. I love the, the little touch of giving her an actual sound effect through the helmet. I think that's such a good touch. I, I just... You got to love that. You got to love it. There's one of them. You ready? Oh my god, I missed! I'm so sorry! It was supposed to be quick and painless. Carolyn. Okay, well. We did the thing. Preparation time. You have 20 seconds to prepare stuff. Okay, no pressure. I don't have enough materials to craft anything. Close it down, back out. Okay, get ready. Get ready. Reload as well. Okay, they are over here. The big boy. Oh. They're whistling. They're evolving. Ben. 
Okay. Okay. We got one wave down. Here's a crate. Let's open it up. Probably some goodies. Okay. Don't mind me. I'm just an astronaut trying to make a living. Do I have my listen mode? I do. Oh my god. I wasn't trained for this. I was trained to go to the moon. There he is. Oh, he's clipping through the wall a little bit. Okay. Okay, that was my bad. Can you tell I don't play shooters with a controller very often? <laughs> am I giving it away? I think I'm giving it away. Okay, we completed the encounter. What happens now? Then we return to the hideout. Straightforward. Wasn't too crazy. Basically, the, the point of this mode is to try and give players a way of experimenting with the combat and delving into it even more. Because while a lot of people don't like the story of The Last of Us Part Two, the gameplay is something which is really hard to argue against. Like it's wildly impressive how good the, the stealth mechanics are and the combat is, it, it just works very, very well. Okay, so we just unlocked a bunch of materials that we can use. We can go to the weapon rack, which is the trading post, and we can purchase different weapons if we want such as bombs, uh, reroll, reroll the trading post inventory refreshes after each encounter. How much are they? 10? I think I'd rather have the bolt action rifle than, than roll for it again. So I think I'll take that and then we are good. We can also take this opportunity to improve our weapons here before we go back out. That's super cool. And I think it probably makes sense to increase, um, well, magazine capacity is probably a good idea. Let's do that. And then she'll improve it. Voila. And again, in case you're not familiar with roguelikes, pretty much if you die, all of this is reset and you try your run again. So every single time it's a little bit different, which is super cool. Now we have the chance to try one of two options. So this one, logging camp in thick fog. Dina is listed. So is Dina going to play with us? Is that the thing? Is that how it's going to work? It's also assault. So it's going to be waves. And then this one is hunted. Survive against continuous enemy reinforcements until the timer runs out. So with that, you're just trying to last as long as you can. And with this, it's the same as we did before with a 2x score multiplier. So let's try this. And with the fog effect, that could be interesting. So let's uh, let's give it a, a looky-loo. Let's see what this is like. As they say, some encounters have mods that add special rules and mechanics and can drastically alter the gameplay. You can view the mods for an encounter on the planning board or from the backpack menu. You can also unlock new mods by completing challenges. Interesting. Allies. Allies will join you for some encounters. Look out for this on the planning board. So yeah, Dina is going to join us for this. Sick. Oh, look at this. Thick fog and rain. Get down, Dina. Just staring at the sky. Okay. This is I'm I'm going to be real. This is this is cool. <laughs> As a fan of the combat of The Last of Us Part 2, this is cool. Booyah. So her AI is not great. <laughs> <laughs> she keeps standing up and then crouching randomly. I wonder if that's a bug or if it's an effect of the fog. I don't know, but she's she's tripping. Come on, poke your head out. Oh, whiffed it. Oh. Okay, we did it. It was not pretty, but we did it. Okay, get, get the materials in here. I can craft a med kit, which is probably a good idea. And then I can use that. Love it. Grab that. And then I'm gonna go hide. Okay, you guys ready? I'm gonna be the pedantic like prick that brings this up. I'm underneath a solid wood plank and it's raining straight through it, so. <laughs> it's a small detail, but I think because I'm used to like that crazy naughty dog level of polish and attention to detail, something like this just stands out. So it, it's just, it's funny to me. To be clear, this is not a big deal, okay? This is not a big deal. I'm just bringing it up because I noticed it. And if I don't mention it now that I've noticed it, I'm going to get indigestion, okay? Oh, the gurgling is soul wrenching. Oh, wow. Good job. Dina did something. 
Oh, baby. There he is. He's coming. Booyakasha. Okay. Good job, fam. Okay, with this, we only have four people to worry about. Oh, no. Are they right here? No, okay. They are across the way. He's charging me. Oh yeah, we did it. Now we've unlocked Dina for subsequent run throughs. Well, we did it. Love it. We sure did, Ellie. We sure did. Okay, now we can see our challenges for Dina. We just unlocked her and to unlock Jesse, we have to complete three encounters with Dina. Okay, and then for new mods, we complete three encounters with mods. That'll give us tier one. Uh, we get new skins if we complete all challenges for Ellie aligned characters. Okay, cool. So there's a lot of there's a lot of runway here if you want to put a good amount of time into this. I wonder how long it would take you to like fully unlock everything. If this gives you like an extra 10 hours of gameplay or if it's a little bit less than that, I'm I'm curious. Okay, with this we unlocked a bunch of stuff. So I think it probably makes sense to buy the shotgun. Because more weapons, more ammo is always good. A fully loaded machete could be good. Some Molotovs would be good too. Buy a couple of those. And then I'll buy the machete. Why not? Fully kitted out machete. I love it. Okay. Then we're good. Can we upgrade our weapons anymore? I'm going to improve the recoil a tad. Give it a compensator. And we should be uh, good to go. Let's try the next round. And you can see since we chose to go to the logging camp, we now do not get the ability to go through these levels. They are no longer an accessible pathway. And here we only have one option. So we're gonna do this one and then we'll have the chance to choose between the resort, gas station, and then follow these on to the final boss encounter. So what I think we're gonna do, just so the whole video isn't this, I'm gonna grind some of this out real quick. And then I'll be back and we'll we'll continue looking at the boss encounter because I'm pretty sure I can get to the boss encounter without losing it. But I guess <laughs> I guess we'll find out if the next shot is me looking downtrodden. It's because I died. OK, let's find out together. Here we go. A little longer than a few minutes later. OK, I actually survived somehow. The last encounter, uh, I did a hunted version and that one was tricky. This this one in the resort that was that was tricky i'm i'm doing it though i can do a mysterious one now where it's all blurred out you don't actually know what you're getting into and then we go to the boss encounter i'm gonna share the unknown one with you because i don't know what i'm getting into and then we'll go to the boss encounter and see if uh, we get curb stomped there here we go mystery encounter i don't know if this means it's going to be extra difficult or if it is just mysterious i don't know um it is mysterious for sure though. I've <laughs> mission accomplished, right? <laughs> okay, it's assault, clear each wave. Uh, we are in the outskirts of Seattle and then decreased enemy health. So they should be easier to kill, I guess, as the modifier. I mean, I'm not mad about it. Okay, it'll be easier to, to take them down. I can work with that. We're fighting the WLF. Okay, this is doable. Wave one out of three. Lots of materials to collect. No way, did they hear me? Did they, did they hear her? Oh no, right next to me. Oh my God, no, not like this. Not like this. Oh no, what? <laughs> the door got shut somehow. Okay, okay, we're okay. We're okay. Run over here. Hide in the grass. Oh my God, there's somebody right next to me. How am I still alive? I should have died so long ago. They don't see me somehow. They don't see the astronaut laying on the ground. Oh, there's two of them. Right over here. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. This is not going the best. This one's rough. It's okay though. Lots of ammo. That was, uh, that was not the cleanest. I'm a little rusty. <laughs> I'll be honest. Okay, we're gonna go with the bow this time as our primary, because too much noise makes this significantly harder. Okay, there, there are a lot of them. There's six, so we... We are potentially going to struggle a little bit unless we can pick them off one by one, little by little. So that's what we're gonna try to do. It's her! Rifle beats bow and arrow. Noted. 
<laughs> this is interesting. So with the random stuff, I'm going to pause it real quick so I can explain this. Because it's random, there are a couple of weird quirks where sometimes things don't combine seemingly in the proper way. So I have two randomized, it seems, skill trees I've unlocked. One is crafting and one is centered around close combat upgrades. And as you can see, the close combat upgrade that I'm going to show you is the same as the one next to it, but it costs more in this skill tree than the other. Which to me is not how this is supposed to work. Oh my god, I my my quick flicks are not are not right. Oh god. Oh, there's a dog. <laughs> That's it, guys. <laughs> That's all I get for trying to show you. <laughs> oh no, I suck so bad. Okay, well. Don't try to multitask. I think that that is uh, the lesson to be learned. Death and no return. There is no, uh, there's no boss fight. The randomized encounter got me. I got, I got cocky. Yeah, D for death. It is cool though. Like it makes me want to play more of this. And honestly, once I stop recording this, I'm going to keep running it and trying to, uh, ooh, custom runs. Uh, I'm going to keep running this because I honestly am just having a good time and that's kind of the point of these modes is if you just like the core game, you just get more mileage out of it. And I find this kind of thing, uh, honestly, pretty cool. Now, one of the other things that they also have added is under this tab on the main menu, the making of, and on here, you can see a handful of things behind the scenes, which is a trailer for the making of the last of us part two, which is a documentary they're going to be putting out kind of like grounded the original one, which is uh, a fantastic watch if you've somehow not seen it already. And then beyond that, they also are doing an official last of us podcast as well. So you can check that out. They also have a commentary so you can uh, listen to the designers and directors and writers and actors give commentary over certain cutscenes. If you've seen them a thousand times, but now you want to hear a different perspective on how they actually made those happen, you can do that. They also have more concept art from the making of the game. And this is the most interesting one to me, the lost levels. You can play early versions of levels that were cut during original development of The Last of Us Part Two. These levels are presented in an unfinished pre-alpha state and have optional developer commentary. Now, there are only three of these, unfortunately, but they are actually relatively well built out and they were cut before the game eventually came out just because they figured it, it wasn't going to get done in time for launch or they didn't think it was going to help the pacing or maybe it hurt the pacing or this or that. There's a lot of reasons for these things potentially being cut. But this one, Jackson Party, Ellie nervously attends a party in Jackson. They note that this level is presented in an unfinished pre-alpha state, reflecting its state. When it was originally cut from the game, this level does not have spoken dialogue, only placeholder lines shown as subtitles. And then the Seattle sewers, Ellie is swept into the Seattle sewer system. This is a section that's actually still sort of in the game, but they cut this particular level from that event, which is kind of cool because like a remnant of it remains, but this big chunk is cut out. And then the hunt, which is where Ellie follows a trail of blood to an abandoned general store. And it's also in a pre-alpha state. So they just make it clear this was not finished when they did all of this. And they also include a introductory video. Let's do that and just hit play and see what this is like. I've not seen this yet, so I'm also excited to see how this works. I am just as curious. You're about to play an unfinished level from The Last of Us Part Two. The reason we added this section is there are a few sequences and we picked the three of the best ones that we cut from the game. You know, often we build a game that's much bigger than what ends up being the final product. They were months away from being finished, but we wanted to give you an insight of what it's like when we built the game, because often we have this whole thing constructed and it doesn't have final art or audio or dialogue. And here you get to see the building blocks of what it's like when we first string a bunch of these levels together. This is the intro to the first deleted level, and this one is the roughest of the three, we wanted to show more of how Jackson operates. So this is the festival where Ellie ultimately kisses Dina. The sequence would have come very late in the game as a flashback sequence while you're in the farm with Dina. And we wanted to show mm. what is the rest of Jackson doing um, and wanted to put on the stick, make it interactive. 
So you could see when you're outside, there are all these almost like carnival games that you can play. You could mix drinks. You could play with these kids that are playing a sort of clicker Marco Polo, sit down and listen <laughs> oh, to conversations. Cool. <laughs> and all the different interactions were first or second pass, very, very early passes. The building blocks are there, but nothing is final. And ultimately, while we were very excited by the sequence, it's pretty fun and lighthearted. It just slowed things too much as we're barreling towards the end of the story at this point. So again, reminder, rough, missing audio, missing animation, missing gameplay tweaks, missing dialogue, but pretty representative of what it would have been. So enjoy. Mm, that's super cool. It makes you wonder, like, I think that the long exhale. <sighs> what the fuck is wrong with me? I'm bottling. Isn't that cool? Oh man, I love this. The early, early work when they're just trying to go like broad strokes of what it's going to look like, piecing it together. Let's do this. And then I assume like this is something. Originally, this level was going to transition us to farm. Oh. We would go all the way through to the dance where Ellie and Dina share their first kiss. Then we would play through farm. And when Ellie plays the guitar at night, she would remember the Seth incident. So the opening for this was a little tricky. We needed it to match at least a little what you might expect emotionally coming from prior beats. Because we were already purposefully disorienting you in time and space. Remember, you just came from this huge fight. To jump straight into it would have been a little too jarring. After some back and forth, we rooted it in Ellie's nerves, calling back to her hands shaking in the theater. But this time, for a much more innocuous reason, we'll find out later. She's nervous because she has a crush on Dina, who is the only reason why she's here at the dance. Oh, man, I love this already. I love it already. This is so cool. You know, I think so often it's really easy for people to just think that these games get tossed together and there's a clear vision from the beginning and things are just kind of laid out and then they happen. But as you can see, like, they start as these levels that they put a lot of time and thought into like, okay, we're going to start it with the handshaking as a callback to this happening in the theater. And then we call back to this and then this ties in like that, because at this point in the story, we have to try and connect the player back to their past as they head into the end. And this level of anxiety that Ellie's feeling towards Dina is the same as Ellie's feeling within the story in the current timeline on the farm. And there's just so many cool layers to it. And then they decide to just cut it because they decided it just didn't work and it wasn't where it needed to be. And it makes you always wonder what you're missing out on. And I freaking love that they're sharing that with the community now. Whatever you think of The Last of Us Part Two is fine, but like you have to appreciate that they're being so transparent with the development process and the things that they cut and why they cut it. And I, I just love, love to see it. As someone who's passionate about video games, as someone who appreciates the art form, I think that this is awesome and I, I can't wait really to dig into to it more. Highlight the way their lives had turned upside down since she went down this path. We had this idea of recontextualizing all of our usual gameplay mechanics that were designed for really violent ends. The workbench, door bashes, throwable weapons, and even the infected, which is my personal favorite. Peppered throughout the level are moments of levity or shared history, all the while seeing how happy and mundane they all were before her huge revenge odyssey. That's super cool. So they w tried to come up with ways to use the violent gameplay systems used in the rest of the game, but rework them into mundane, even even like endearing systems. So like having the kids pretend to be clickers <laughs> and playing with each other. That's crazy, man. What do they say about it's it? One of my favorite sections, because I think that it achieves both the slice of life aspect of Jackson, while also being a stark reminder of how dark the world that they live in really, really is. To attract attention and curiosity, one of the kids was supposed to make this adorable, messed up little clicker impression, and the others would giggle. We tried a version where if you got close enough, the kid might try to follow you a little before turning back. Since clickers are blind and move by echolocation, for this game of messed up tag, Ellie must close her eyes and listen for when the children give themselves away. The thought was that these kids are in relative safety. They still grow up with the dangers of clickers and runners, and all those lessons would embed themselves in the games that they play. When the festival got cut, they tried to preserve this moment and move it to the front of the game where the snowball fight is as a tutorial. However, being in the headspace of a clicker doesn't really teach you how to deal with them. Eventually, it evolved, and they instead made the snowball fight, which was, I think, way more effective. 
For me, it's character illuminating that not only does Ellie know this game, she plays along. There's a familiarity with the kids that's really nice to see, especially because it's such a difference from the Ellie we see later, who has a sort of hollow normalcy that she's trying to get with JJ, but kind of fails. I love this stuff. See, I think that Ellie would have been well served to have a couple of moments of kind of a uh, sweetness and endearment because there are there are a couple of moments where like she and dina are kind of sweet and kind but one of the common frustrations with the last of us is that it, it's like very dry and very sad and depressive and oppressive and so to have some moments that are just feel good without the drama i, I think would be good seeing her like play games with local uh children i think in the snowball fight sequence at the beginning of the game is a really good uh, example of it working and i think it could have been better served to have a lot more moments like this it is a little crazy to see kids like pretending to be infected um but <laughs> you know i guess it does make sense in the context of this world that that would be a game that they play because it's a, a reality for them oh and then you can hear the music let me in. Little hug. Probably some dialogue playing out here. They don't have the dialogue finished. So they're just kind of looking at each other blankly. And then you go in. That's it. And they just cut it because they felt it brought the story to a crawl. So they cut all of that work and all those cool things. It's just crazy to me, mate. Like, there's so many little details that you never would really think of, but it's all meant to tie back into the story and kind of cause it to fold into each other. Even something as simple as how they start that scene with Ellie's hand shaking, tying back to previous story beats, is carefully, carefully considered. It really makes you appreciate all of the little details that go into this. And listen, there's a lot here. I did not play all of the audio clips. I didn't go fully around the level because if you want to explore this, I encourage you to do so. I I want to reward Naughty Dog for doing this because I think these types of updates are awesome. I would love to see lost levels for like God of War Ragnarok or Spider-Man 2 or any of their other first party games that they have access to that type of data for. I think that would be awesome. And I would love to see more studios be transparent about the difficulties of game development like this, because I think it makes the community appreciate the final product all the more to see all of the extra crap they had to wade through to get to that end result. It's why I love watching these documentaries on the creation of these games. It's why I love reading books on game development. And I think that this is another great thing. I didn't even know that I needed in my life, but I'm glad it's here. So all told, The Last of Us Part Two Remastered is, I feel, the definitive way to play the game. At this point, it's going to be the way that most new players will play the game once they see the HBO Season 2, whenever that releases. And I think it's worth the $10 upgrade, honestly. The no return mode alone is probably worth 10 bucks, and then you pair into it some minor, though still technically there, visual improvements and then other stuff like these lost scenes and extra skins and stuff like that. I think that it's a fair package. And you know what? I was pretty hard on Sony and PlayStation when they dropped The Last of Us Part 1 remake because I was like, for full price, this is a little, a little light, a little thin on improvements, but offering a $10 upgrade path, I think is more than fair. And I encourage you to check it out if you are interested in how these games happen or The Last of Us in general. I'm pretty impressed and I know what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the evening. So... <laughs> I guess uh, that's kind of like the ultimate compliment I can pay a, a game like this that I do a video on is normally like I, I film this video for an hour and a half or two hours and then we cut it down to like 20, 30 minutes and then I'm good. I move on to something else like Baldur's Gate for the rest of the evening and I'm good. But with this and a handful of other games we've done recently, I finish these videos and I just turn off the lights, I turn off the cameras, and I continue playing because I'm honestly having a very good time. And that's where I'm at with this. So yeah, that's going to do it for me. Thank you for watching. I love you all. And I'll see you in the next video or over on my live streams linked below. I'll see you in the next one. Hugs and kisses. Bye-bye.